By the time you're done with this video, you'll know how to make the perfect pot roast three different ways, whether you got an Instapot, an oven, or a crock pot. Meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. All right, people, it's a pot roast party. The weather's getting cooler, comfort food season is rolling in, and some folks are even eating pot roast for the holidays this time around. So we gotta season the pot roast. These are all three and a half pounds per pot roast. Beautiful marbling on here, which is kind of what you wanna look for when you're at the grocery store. Those white lines of fat that you see in the pot roast are gonna indicate the fat content in the pot roast, which is gonna end up with a nice flavorful end product for you. First thing you wanna do is go real heavy on the kosher salt. Again, this is a three and a half pound piece of meat, so you wanna season it like it is. We're going kosher salt and my all-purpose seasoning, which also has some salt, but it's a low sodium seasoning, so that's why we're going a little heavy right now with the kosher salt. All right, guys, so the key here is heavy salt, and then you wanna go with like black pepper, onion powder, garlic, things of that nature. Very traditional for a pot roast. You wanna keep it nice and simple. Good application to AP. All right, guys, in my opinion, one of the most critical parts of nailing a good pot roast is getting the sear properly done. So you want a nice hot cast iron skillet, hex clad pan, stainless steel, something like that. We're gonna sear our pot roast that's going in the crock pot and in the Instapot in that skillet because in my opinion, neither of those two devices give you a good sear. And then we'll sear our oven pot roast in the Dutch oven in which we're gonna put it in the oven to lock in all that flavor. All right, so the key here, guys, is to make sure the skillet is smoking hot. I like to use avocado oil for mine just because it has a high smoke point. And it's healthy for you, mild flavor. Lay that pot roast in there and then press down firmly so that it's making maximum surface area contact with the bottom of that skillet. That's gonna result in a beautiful, even crust. It's about four or five minutes per side right here. Now that, my friends, is what you wanna see. Beautiful, even crust. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Then we're gonna sear our veggies, which is a mirepoix. A mirepoix is comprised of onion, celery, and carrots. All right, so once you remove your seared pot roast, we're going in with our mirepoix, which again is onion, celery, and carrots. We made enough for three batches here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit. We're gonna add the garlic to the crock pot as well. Very traditional flavors right here. Root vegetable is gonna add a nice earthy element to the dish. We just wanna saute this, get the flavor going. Then we're gonna add it to the crock pot. Get up all those brown bits off the bottom of the skillet. Lots of flavor in there as well. And speaking of lots of flavor, we're gonna add a good tablespoon or so of better than bouillon beef base. Now this is packed with sodium, guys, so you wanna use a low sodium beef broth when you go ahead and purchase that from the grocery store, but you can't miss on that flavor right there. We're also going in with a nice tablespoon of tomato paste. We're just gonna give that a little mix, and then we're gonna deglaze the skillet with our dry red wine, which is optional for those of you guys that don't wanna cook with any alcohol. Feel free to use a beef broth in place of that. So we need three cups of beef broth and a half cup of red wine. And now for one of my favorite parts of cooking, you gotta taste as you go. So half cup going in, one swig for the chef. If you're having a day like I'm having, maybe two swigs. Not bad. Now you just wanna bring that to a boil, allow all the alcohol to cook off, leaving behind the delicious flavor. Very traditional for a good homemade pot roast the way grandma used to make. So after a minute or two, you're good to go. The alcohol is cooked off. That, that's when we're going in with our three cups of beef broth. We're gonna scrape up all that flavor and all that's going in the crock pot. Now, a lot of people, when they make a crock pot pot roast, they just dump everything straight in there. They don't sear the pot roast. They don't sear the veggies. They don't take the step to you know, get up all this flavor in the skillet. And I think that's a lot of times why a crock pot pot roast, say that three times fast, lacks flavor. Well, yours won't if you follow this recipe. We're gonna bring that to a simmer and then everything is going in the crock pot for four hours on high or eight hours on low. All right, so right before we go into the crock pot, I'm gonna add a couple more ingredients. One tablespoon of worst word in the world sauce and one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. I know what you're thinking about the soy sauce, but you gotta trust me. It's gonna add a lot of umami to your braising liquid. It's gonna be delicious. Last but not least, we're gonna add some fresh herbs, the kind you cook with, not the kind that cook you. For the uninitiated, that's rosemary and thyme. That, my friends, is smelling amazing. That's going in the crock pot. All right, so we're gonna add this first. That way we're not submerging our pot roast in it. 
Another pro tip is to preheat your crock pot. It's already cooking slow, so you don't want it to cook any slower. And then we're gonna grab arguably the most beautifully seared pot roast known to man. Nestle that on in there. And probably add about another cup of beef broth. I'm cooking this on high for four hours. If you got the time, you can go eight hours low and slow. That's the best way to do it in the crock pot in my opinion. The beauty of this, guys, is that the recipe is about the same no matter which method you choose. Other than the fact that you wanna sear everything in a separate skillet for the Instapot and the Crock-Pot method, and for the Dutch oven, which we're about to do now, everything's in the same pot and that goes in the oven. All right, so once you add your roast back to the Dutch oven, we're gonna cover with a lid, pop that in a 325 degree oven for about three to three and a half hours or until it's fork tender. All right, guys, so as you can see, we're just about down the home stretch on this pot roast. It's nice and fork tender. It's about to start falling apart. Probably about another 20 to 30 minutes until it's perfect which means it's the perfect time to go ahead and add in your small potatoes. So we've already cleaned these, dried them off. We're gonna go ahead and add them to the braising liquid, let them absorb all that flavor and become perfectly tender and not mushy like if you added them at the very beginning. So I like to add mine during the last 20 to 30 minutes like you see me doing right here. And that's going back in the oven. All right, guys, you can't forget the gravy, baby. No matter what method you choose to make your pot roast, you wanna take that liquid and make your gravy with it. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and strain off all of that braising liquid. We're gonna bring that to a boil, hit it with a slurry to thicken it up, season it to taste, and that'll be our gravy. Now, if you wanna cheat a little bit, they got those au jus packets and gravy starter packs and all that stuff, and I used to use those too back in the day. Nothing wrong with it, but nothing beats that flavor that you built in that pot. You worked hard for it, don't let it go to waste. I like to add a little bit at a time because you want to be able to adjust the thickness. There we go. Again, taste as you go. A little salt, pepper should be all you need here. And that is the perfect pot roast gravy right there. I can already see it. And now my friends, it's time for my favorite part of the job, which is the taste test. Let's see which one of these came out the best. My vote is the old school method, straight out of the oven, perfectly tender, great color on it as well. Mm. Maintains its flavor great. Still nice and juicy. Gotta try one of them carrots though. Mm. That to me screams fall, comfort food, winter time, whatever. It's nice and cold outside. You need to warm up. That's what you need right there. Now here we have the Instapot. So if you're in a rush, you got an hour, maybe an hour and a half or less. This is the method you can go with. This to me didn't come out quite as tender and that may be because i could have let it cook a little bit longer so i'll take the blame for that but let's see about the flavor definitely a little bit tougher it's still shredding apart a little bit drier as well which in my experience anytime i cook with the pressure cooker that's one of my biggest complaints because i feel like it kind of dries out a little bit whether it's short ribs or pot roast now most folks' favorite way to do this is the crock pot. It's the easiest way to do it. If you got four to eight hours, you just throw it in there, set it and forget it. This bad boy actually has some great color for a crock pot, which I was very surprised with. And it's pretty tender. So I'm gonna guess that this is the second best, but we about to find out. That's surprisingly good. Hold on now. Mm. That's close. I'm going oven method slightly just for texture. It has nice crispiness on the exterior, still nice and soft and delicious. The crock pot loses the texture a little bit because of the cooking process. Fantastic though. Can't go wrong with any of these options. All right, people, it's a pot roast party. Comfort food season is, <clears throat> what did I say? Weather's getting cold. And some people are even eating pot roast. <clears throat> some people are even eating pot roast for the holidays. This could be a rough day. A mirepoix is composed of I'm and everything up. The beauty of this is that the recipe is basically the exact same no matter which cooking... Why can't I talk today? 
I don't need nothing but a biscuit. 